When I was a kid, I fell toward what a lot of other kids do. I wanted to be a force of good, someone who could protect those around me, and who could make the world a happier and more accepting place. As a kid, I didn't have a lot of power or freedom. The places I went and the things I saw were heavily curtailed to my parents' overview. So, to express this powerful journey I wanted to have, I would go on adventures. I remember my two best friends in fourth grade and I would write down monsters on cards with different attacks and sizes and weapon drops and whatever. We would go outside to each of our houses and we'd pretend to fight these monsters, level up, help each other, discover, I don't know, big secrets and stuff. We would discover new items, and none of it really linked to anything other than just our fantasy ideas that we had. No holds were barred. I made the monsters and plots to my house, and they did the same for their houses. It was unadulterated fun, but me being the kid I was, who quit t-ball after just one game and after playing two years of basketball couldn't make myself do it anymore, this provided an excellent outlet not only for physical activity, but for sociality. I only have fond memories of this. The world seemed like a more magical place. This sort of feeling was respected in my video games too. While I can still remember the wonder of playing games on the SNES and GameCube, there was a game that I truly fell in love with, all because I watched a playthrough on a Let's Play on a channel called Chugga Conroy back in 2008. This was before Let's Plays were really a thing, PewDiePie didn't even have a channel yet. I sat wide-eyed and watched the SNES playthrough of Earthbound, and then I moved on to watch Mother 3. You see, I just started playing through Mother 3 again, and it has been bringing me back, I guess, to my childhood, the absolute place of hope and peace, before politics were at the forefront of our lives, before people got unrepairably upset, before I had responsibilities to maintain jobs and get good grades in university. It's so overwhelming sometimes, you just have to take a breather. I think, for me, I know that even though I'm young, I still get caught up in the feeling like I, I don't have enough time. That I can't just sit and relax, I, I can't calm down and take a breather. So I beat myself up, I tell myself that I'm getting behind and everyone is going, that... <sighs> wow, but that feeling I get in my short escapes when I was younger, when I was out there fighting non-existent monsters or playing Mother 3, when I am running around with my dog in Mother 3, that feeling that brings me back and drags the other feeling away. My concerns are legitimate, I'm not going to pretend that they're not, but I can't fight every battle, I can't be a, as cringy as this sounds, high enough level for every real life fight. Sometimes it's okay to run away. Sometimes I lack the consideration for others in the same way. Sometimes I wonder just how blessed of a period I lived in to experience the benefits of technology while also being able to exercise my own creativity. I wonder if some of that is lost today. I remember as I grew up, life started to compress my dreams into a more realistic shapes and forms. Like I can't be the dragon slayer or the savior of the world loved by everyone, but Maybe I can just joyfully, awkwardly be stumbling through a simple, happy route. This was about 7th grade, as I started to compress a little bit in my imagination of the life I wanted <laughs> by watching things like Lucky Star, a show with so much meandering and laid-back simplicity uh, that it's hard not to enjoy it, at least for me. It was a show that never hurried and always, uh, I guess, reveled in the little things. This was also around the time that I started to watch crappy harem shows, which of course I eventually grew up and got sick of and moved on to the normal romance shows I talked about last week. But although I'm unsure if I think that I would still enjoy these shows, and I have tried to come back to a few of them and uh, it just doesn't do it for me, but even though I remember when I was younger, they were just really bright, and I, I don't mean that in like a figurative sense even, like, I mean literally, the colors were so sunny, and some of the shows had everything so overly cutesified. This is the world that I lived in, the skewed escapist reality. I remember going to Yu-Gi-Oh tournaments with my dad, he didn't play obviously, he just took me, but I remember the day that I finally won a Yu-Gi-Oh tournament with my Exodia deck, and everyone was surprised I did. I regained it for a small moment that day. It, the power of slaying the dragon, 
Now, I get that feeling in smaller and smaller doses as I get older and older. I get those feeling in smaller doses whenever I'm helping my friends out, or when I get a good idea and I act on it, when I bite down my nervousness and ask people on dates, when I work, save money, and buy things. A lot of fantasy has all but faded away, but that magic has remained in some intangible, absolute joyous feeling. Sometimes I just forget what the feeling is like and I need to be reminded of it because although sometimes it's okay to run away, there are times when you need to stay. When the person you love needs a shoulder to cry on, when somebody feels hopeless, loses a job, a game, or a friend. When things aren't going well, you can be the hero in that moment as other people may be for you in other moments. We grow and we build each other and we make all of our existences better and more supportive. A lot of times, you don't know just how far your reach can be, how many people are touched. There is still a lot that I haven't shared about my personal life, but I just want this to maybe have you draw to your own personal memories and stories and experiences, and think about the people who have positively affected you, even in the most minute ways, the gates to those good memories. And so, sometimes it comes back to you that you can't be the knight or slay the dragon, but you can still save people. You can still slay the dark thoughts in people's heads. Even more, you can show them better realities they never imagined in all their childish wonder would exist. Sometimes it's okay to run away, but there are times when you need to stay. I want to thank all of the bright slices of life and good-hearted harems, Shigesato Itoi, creator of the Mother series, and Shaga Conroy, who introduced me to the Mother series at 10 years old, that I can still remember and am still talking about 10 years later at 20. Life really can be made whole by the little things. I believe it. Thank you so much for watching again. I wanted to thank all of you for watching, uh, subscribing, sharing the videos, everything that you guys have done. Um, it, it's kind of silly. Um, I'm just over a thousand subscribers now. Um, and before I started making YouTube videos or really taking it seriously, you know, trying to do it on my own, uh, I always kind of looked at a thousand subscribers and I was like, oh, that's nothing. You know, you know, just because you see so many big subscribers, it's very rare that I would follow somebody or f even know about an account that had a thousand subscribers. And I, I guess I just didn't make it account for much. But whenever you're on the other side, and maybe it's just because I'm a sensitive little boy, but <laughs> uh, it really does feel... Uh, it really does just make me feel appreciated. It makes me feel like I'm doing something that I'm uh, either entertaining people, helping people, blah, 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 blah. Um, yeah, but even though it's just a thousand subs, um, a thousand is a lot more than I think uh, even myself, I realize. So, see you next week.